Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about opening a bank account in the Philippines, having multiple ways to access your money, also avoiding ATM surcharges, and much more. Stick around. Alright guys, so it all starts in your home country having three ways to access your money. Number one, always maintain your bank from your home country. Very important. Uh, I know guys who've, for some reason or the other, they closed their bank, thought they wouldn't need it anymore, and they've regretted it. So, home bank account, and uh, also try to choose one that will refund ATM fees. Example, in the U.S., there's Charles Schwab, Fidelity, USAA, Navy Federal Credit Union, to name a few. They'll refund that 250 peso fee. Some, some of those banks will only do it up to a certain amount each month. And uh, just a side note, Charles Schwab, I tried to open it up an account here, and they actually opened up the account, gave me an account number, I went to go fund it, and they actually said, hey, uh, we're closing your account, suspicious activity or something. I don't know, it's because the, maybe I had a VPN on, or maybe they realized I wasn't in the U.S., I was in the Philippines. So open up the Charles Schwab while you're still in the U.S. if you're going to do it. Before you move out to the Philippines or here for a long period of stay, what you want to do is make sure that ATM card is extended out as far as possible for the expiration. Even if it's six months or a year away, you can go to your bank and say, hey, I'm moving overseas, need uh, your card not to expire while you're there. So then they should be able to get you a new card. Next thing, have a way to get your money a second backup. I like WISE for that. Link is down below. You can get your first transfer for free. Uh, WISE comes with even a debit card now. I think it's five to nine dollars for that debit card with the MasterCard or Visa logo. Use that for your backup source to access your money. You can also transfer money into a Philippines bank account, which we will talk about in a bit. And you could use it to maybe pay your rent. Uh, even uh, if your landlord has a Philippines bank, you could transfer it right into his uh, bank account each month. Easy. And uh, another thing is you can transfer it to your GCash, and then your GCash can be used to pay different things. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, WISE is great for that. That's a great backup source. Do all of that while you're still in your home country. Uh, source number three, cash remittance office. You can use Remitly, World Remit, Zoom, just uh, there's, there's Western Union, MoneyGram, and uh, any of those will work. Sign up, register, you don't have to pay for anything. Just have it ready to go, just in case. Funny story, I used to refer Remitly. They said, suspicious activity, referring too many people, they had to close my account. Sorry for giving you too much business, Remitly. So I, I don't use Remitly. I ha actually have a third source for backup now, and that's PayPal. So I have my, my three sources. I feel secure. Little side note, sometimes you'll be out in the uh, province or even these smaller cities, and uh, there will be maybe one ATM, and that ATM will be out of money. Or there's no ATM, but what every little small town has in the Philippines is a cash remittance office. Sabuano, Palawan, El Luler, any of those where you can always wire yourself money. I actually have a friend who lives in South Cebu who's got to come over to Dumaguete each month just so he can take all the money out so he can pay his rent and have money for groceries and things like that. So that is your three sources. By the way, when here living or staying in the Philippines for any extended period of time, front pocket wallet, great. Only carry one card, one ID. You don't need to carry it all with you. Don't carry a lot of cash. I like this one. It's down in the description under my Geo Essentials webpage, Geo in the Philippines webpage. But so it's got a clip for the money. And over here, you got a button that you push and out come the cards and cards do not come out and they lock back in so fantastic little wallet goes in the front pocket don't carry more than one card or one id anything happens back in your hotel back in your house whatever you get your, your second source of uh to get your money and another id like your passport or something like that there. Philippines bank account, good to have. 
I wouldn't trust it to put my social security in there or direct deposit. Um, it's okay to have uh, money in there and use it maybe to transfer money into. I still don't think you should close your bank account in your home country. Keep that always. And remember what I said is what one bank may say here in the Philippines, another bank across the street might have different, uh, a different uh, set of rules or regulations. So I went into BPI and uh, this is what they told me I needed. And I will show that up on the screen here. One, valid ID or passport. Two, one by one or two by two picture. Three, TIN number, which is tax identification number, probably from your home country. Four, proof of billing or barangay certificate. Five, initial deposit of 3,000. That, of course, would change depending on the bank. And six, ACR card with permanent resident. ACR card, alien certificate of registration, which you receive on your second extension of your visa when you're here in the Philippines. First, first extension, you get another 29 days. Second extension, 59 days. But at that point, they will make you get the ACR card. You either need to have a retirement visa, the marriage visa, educational visa, work visa, one of those to open up a bank account here. Now, again, I have buddies. This is BPI. I have a buddy who opened up a BPI account in Cebu with um, only half of those requirements. Why? Because his girlfriend know somebody who works in the bank. Amazing how all of a sudden you don't need all of this. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times in the Philippines it really is who you know. So uh, also you could go into a different branch or a different bank altogether and uh, you wouldn't have that uh, issue. And maybe they'll do it on a tourist visa. So depends on the bank. Talk to other foreigners in expat groups. Hey, where did you open up a bank account? And, and somebody will say, oh, you can go to this bank and do it. Banks that I like in the Philippines, BPI, uh, Union Bank, China Bank, and Chase, because those four you can take out up to 20,000 at one time. And, uh, you know, when you're being charged 250 pesos per transaction, then you want to be able to take out as much as possible. The rest of the banks in the Philippines, typically only 10,000 and one transaction. The amount you can take out in one day, that's dependent on your bank in your home country. So also why I say always keep your home bank, things usually run much smoother, uh, customer service is a little better, a little more efficient, federally insured up to a higher amount. I'll give you an example. I had Metro Bank here in the Philippines. I booked a hotel through Agoda. Agoda double charged me. So I called up Agoda and they said, it's not coming from us. Check with your bank. So I went down to the bank. I went to a Metro Bank. They said, oh, you have to go to the Metro Bank where you opened up your account. <laughs> so I went to the exact one where I opened my account and they said, okay, we'll investigate it. And I said, great. How long? This week? Next week? She said six to eight weeks. And I was like, holy crap, six to eight weeks. So it ended up only taking three. But in the meantime, I said, will you refund the money back to me immediately while you investigate? And they said, no, uh, not until investigation is complete. So ended up taking three to four weeks or so. They refunded the money. Everything was fine. But I had a similar experience with my USAA bank account. And guess what? Immediately, they refunded the money back into my account while they investigated. Investigation was completed in about three to five days, and they said, it's complete. We find that uh, you're telling the truth or whatever, and, and that was it. So that's why I say, keep your bank account from your home country. Last thing, Gcash, you can use that to pay your bills here, your electric, your water, your internet. You could use it perhaps to pay your rent. Uh, load your phone, send money to other people. Also, if you, uh, you do need a Philippines phone number for that, you need to register it. With this whole registration with the Philippines phone number thing, we have found a way around that. Now, this is why when it came out in the news and they said, if you have a SIM card already, you have 180 days to register. 
and I said to myself, this is a whole fiasco as of right now. I'm going to wait and see what happens. And I'm glad I did because now there's a workaround. But the workaround is that you go into a globe or smart office. They will uh, set you up with a contract, uh, either a prepaid plan, and then you don't even have to register. You don't have to worry about a, an onward ticket every 30 days or a visa extension or, uh, you know, none of that. You don't have to register every 30 days. So that's probably what I'm going to do when Maya and I get back from Thailand. Also, if you want to help support my channel and you want more videos, check out my patreon.com slash geo in the Philippines for 80 plus videos that are not found on YouTube. Get additional benefits such as consultations, t-shirts, coffee mugs, and much, much more all on my Patreon account. And uh, depending on the membership that you select, you can also help support me through YouTube membership where you'll get additional videos and benefits as well. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, check out my next video, which is the Gcash video. Thank you guys so much, and I will see everyone next time.